Hello everyone, welcome back. In this presentation, let's focus on the database design. At first, let's see what are the topics we are going to understand in this presentation. At first, we will see an analogy to understand why design process is important. Then we will see the overview of the design process, followed by the design process in the database management system. And finally, we will see the various design issues in the database management system design process. Let's start with the analogy. I would say any design process cannot be rigid. The reason is our requirements may change at any point of time. If the design process is rigid, obviously the database implementation which is following that design process will also be definitely rigid and it leads to many drawbacks to us. So what I mean to say here is any design process should have some room or scope for changes or alterations or modifications or improvements or at times we need to remove certain things that are not required in the design. And the modification may be also for the performance improval aspects as well. So there can be many reasons for the changes in the design. Just think about this example, the banking system in India. The banking system in India adopted the use of computers in early 1980s. But this computerization process gained pace in 1991-92 period. The banking system obviously had the implementation of the databases so as to effectively retrieve and store the data. In 2009, the Aadhaar system was launched and the banking system were directed to capture the Aadhaar information from all the customers. So obviously, the existing banking system needed the modification of their databases in order to include the new feature, the Aadhaar. This Aadhaar, what I mean for India, is like the social security number, the SSN of the United States. Every country has its own unique features. I mean to say, the banking system in India were successfully able to adopt the modification, I mean the inclusion of Aadhaar in the banking system databases because the design process helped us to include modifications into the databases. Because every database is actually driven by a design process. This is not just for databases. Think about anything, the architecture, the building construction or the hospital construction or the IT park construction. Everything will follow some designs. If the design is perfect, the implementation will be perfect. But the design should be having some room for changes because our requirements may vary at any point of time. With this basic information, let's step into the topic of the day, the design process. Let's see the overview of the design process. Why do we need a design process? In general, designing a database application is complex. Just think about the banking system as an example. Do you think that it will have only one or two tables? Definitely, it has a lot of tables, isn't it? And all the relationship among the tables have to be properly established because it's dealing with monetary aspects. Every penny counts. Customers cannot compromise in the loss of their money, even if it is one dollar or one rupee or a cent or a penny. So designing such a database application is actually complex. And at the same time, we are not going to implement the databases directly. We are going to do some designs because any system architecture, it's going to follow the design. So the interaction of the application with the database is important because the users are not going to directly use the databases. They are going to use the front-end tools in order to interact with the databases. The front-end tools are generally developed with the help of some application programming tools. So in simple terms, the application is going to interact with the database and hence designing the database is generally considered to be complex. If it is a small database, it may be easy. But think about the real-time scenario where huge customers are there. Millions and billions of information have to be stored. In those cases, it has to be dealt very carefully. So in design process, the needs of the user play a central role in the design process. The reason is, Users are going to interact with the databases through the application. Whatever the application or the front-end is created, users are going to deal with this application so that this application in turn is going to interact with the databases. So, 
the role or the needs of the users play a central role in the design process. So when we talk about users, we have a variety of users who are going to interact with the database, which we have already seen in the earlier presentations. So what I mean to say here is design process or design phases are also crucial. It's not directly we are going to implement. We are going to create a design and we expect the design to be so perfect so that the implemented databases will be so perfect. When we talk about the database design, we have the conceptual design, the logical design and the physical database design. We have already seen about the three tier architecture in chapter one. Just correlate that with these three aspects, the conceptual design, the logical design and the physical design. I will just give briefing about this. In the conceptual design, it deals with the tables, the columns and the relationship. Coming to the logical design, it deals with mainly the structure of the data elements. And coming to the physical, we know this is actually the database specific implementation. Because in the logical design, we deal with the data model. Whereas in the physical aspects, it is actually the implementation. I mean, the database specific implementation of the data model, what we have created in the logical design. So the design process in database will deal with the conceptual, logical and the physical database design. And this design process is expected to ensure integrity, efficiency and security. Why? Because we trust on the databases, the data stored in the databases. Integrity aspects, it ensures that the data stored in the database is correct, consistent and dependable. Efficiency, it gives best performance when we store and retrieve the data. And obviously, any system that requires security in all aspects, physical aspect as well as logical aspect. We are done with the overview of the design process. Let's now see the various design phases in databases. In general, the database design phases include four phases. The first phase, I mean the initial phase, is to characterize the data needs and the database users. Basically, what are the characteristics of the data that we are going to deal with this system? The type of data, the data that are actually going to be stored in the database, all these characteristics and not just the data characteristics, also the database users. Who are all the users associated with this database? Which user can access what kind of data? All these things are dealt in the initial phase. Coming to the next phase, which pertains to the data model. We have already seen about data model in chapter one of this lecture series. If you want information about a data model, I request you to navigate to chapter one of this playlist and visit the data model lecture to gain better insights about data model. So after we choose the data model in phase two, then comes the next one the fully developed conceptual schema. I have already told you, the conceptual schema deals with the table, the columns and the relationship among every items included in the design. So, this fully developed conceptual schema is actually dealt in the third phase. Once a fully developed conceptual schema is developed, finally the implementation. So, the final phase is the process of implementation where the process of this fully developed conceptual schema, I mean, the final phase deals with the process of moving from an abstract data model to the implementation. So, implementation is the final phase of the database design. We are done with the various design phases in DBMS. Before we conclude, let's see the various design issues in the database design. When we talk about design, it has two major issues. Number one, the redundancy. Redundancy is not just wasting the memory because of duplication of data. Of course, when there is duplication of data, obviously the memory will be increased. The database size is going to be increased. But redundancy is not just wasting the memory, but it is also a potential threat to the data. So we have to take care of redundancy so that our data that we are going to store in the database is not redundant Eventually, it helps in averting the potential threats that are dealing with the data. Coming to the next design issue, which is the incompleteness. Then obviously, the truth values cannot be ascertained, isn't it? It is basically a system, a computer system, which is going to deal with the databases. When we talk about that, the truth values are going to be asserted. Let's say the database query is going to be executed. 
with the help of an boolean expression in that case either a true or false has to be asserted if the database is incomplete obviously the truth values cannot be asserted in simple terms incompleteness means it is not complete isn't it so obviously it leads to some problems and that's it guys what are the topics we have seen in this presentation we have seen an analogy we have seen the overview of the design process we have seen the design process in dbms and we also have seen the design issues in database designs i hope the session is informative and thank you for watching